Good morning, welcome to Hope Fellowship of Somerset. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. for fun, food, fellowship, and frolicking. We enjoy being with one another, we love on each other, and if you're looking for a fellowship where the pastor uh, uh, preaches the word and the people walk in the word, where people hear the truth of salvation and not a greasy grace, where you want to hear um, about our Jewish roots, and the Pentecostal message, well then we're the place for you. If you live in the Somerset and St. Croix region of Wisconsin, and even on the other side of the river, uh, we're here for you. If you want to join us, great. If you want to stay with us, even better. We could use some help reaching this area for the Messiah. Today is August 21st, 2022, or 2022. Um, we're talking about doctrine. Next week we're going to go to Teshuvah, which is a four-week period where we get the opportunity to re return and repent to Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. It's a time of grace, mercy, forgiveness, repentance, receiving love, and executing love. I hope that those of you who join us will enjoy the truth behind Teshuvah. Today, is the sermon is relevant and sound doctrine is tantamount 23. We're on the 23rd uh, sermon on it. Teaching false doctrines will, and I have to emphasize this, will lead others to the hellfires. If we're not preaching the true God, a good news message, if we're not preaching the truth that is in Yeshua, if we're allowing for other religions and other doctrines that are antithetical to the true and pure doctrine of the word, we are holding the hands of those we lead to hell and its uh, eternal fires. And for you pastors out there that are listening to this that disagree with me, start reading your Bible. Start seeking the Father. Find out from Him. He's the one who, if you don't like what He has to say, tell Him. Well, <clears throat> dog trouble. We all have dog trouble, don't we? at one point or another in our lives. During a countrywide drive to round up all unlicensed dogs, a patrolman signaled a driver to pull his vehicle over to the side of the road. When the driver asked why he had been stopped, the police officer, or the officer pointed out, pointed to the uh, big dog sitting on the seat beside him and asked, does your dog have a license? No, the man said he doesn't need one. Yes, he does, answered the officer, but said the driver, I always do all the driving. <laughs> well, today, I got some courtesy giggles, the rest want to rail, uh, run me out on the rails. So Today's scripture reading is Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Be strong in Adonai and in his mighty power. Put on all of Yahweh's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of Elohim's armor so, that you, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the day, time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of Elohim's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news message so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your ha helmet and take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. <clears throat> believers are facing powerful spiritual warfare in these last days. <clears throat> these demonic assaults are worse than anything we can imagine. Elohim's word tells us we are at war. Our adversary, Satan the devil, is hell-bent on destroying us. 
Paul warns us to beware of Satan's warfare strategies and machinations in 2 Corinthians 2. 2 Corinthians 2.11 tells us we do not want Satan to win any victory here, and we know his machinations well. We are given powerful weapons with which we can defend ourselves from Satan, his fallen angelic allies, and demons and their powerful, stealthy, and potentially deadly attacks. These weapons are used to take back the lands that the enemy has stolen and to take captivity captive and set the prisoner free. Many believers are held in bondage behind satanic enemy lines. To recap what we covered last week, we need to remind ourselves of the weapons that have been provided to us from the Almighty, our Savior, Messiah Yeshua, the Holy Spirit, and Elohim's Word. We have five categories of weapons at our disposal for waging effective spiritual warfare. They are provided by Yahweh for spiritual warfare against the fallen governing agencies of the universe. Our primary defense in spiritual warfare is Messiah's name. That name is Yeshua. We have been provided Messiah's power and authority over Satan, fallen angels, and demons in his name. Our second defense in spiritual warfare is worship. Satan wants our worship, but cannot break through our defenses when we worship Yahweh, for his presence and angels protect us. Our third defense in spiritual warfare is intercessory prayer. When we seek Yahweh in prayer in spirit and in truth, Satan's attacks on us are impeded. Prayer is our shield against his attack. Our fourth defense in spiritual warfare is Messiah's blood. When we claim Messiah's blood during spiritual warfare, it works as a force field against all attacks from fallen angels and demons. Our fifth defense in spiritual warfare is the word of our testimony. When we declare Messiah's work in our lives, we are in effect declaring victory in warfare and our enemies utter defeat. These weapons of supernatural mass destruction can save our lives. They will keep us safe from harm when we exercise spiritual battle. They are powerful weapons when used on Elohim's terms. Paul based his knowledge of spiritual warfare in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 as preparing for battle when he referred to putting on the whole armor of Yahweh. He wrote Ephesians while imprisoned in Rome. At that time, he observed the, his jailers, the Roman centurions. He became very well acquainted with the armor they wore and the, with, with the weapons they carried for protection. They protected the soldiers. Yahweh's armor is an armor of light. It blinds the enemy to Yahweh's onslaught and brings his defeat in the, its dazzling display of power. This is the armor that Paul describes in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Which takes us to point one. Yahweh's armor of light, in fusion with heaven's weapons of warfare, makes us more formidable opponents and overwhelming victors. When heaven's weapons of warfare are used in conjunction with Yahweh's armor of light, we become an invincible force in our Messiah, Master Messiah Yeshua's power in supernatural warfare. As a matter of course, in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, from the life of faith we exercise in Messiah Yeshua, we find ourselves in the thick of spiritual warfare against second heaven's rulers and authorities. Romans 13, 12 exhorts us, The night is far gone and the day is almost here. Let us then drop the works of darkness and put on Yahweh's armor of light. When Paul said this in Romans 13, he referred to the fact that in these last days, Satan's dark works are close to ending because he has already lost to the light of the universe, Yahweh's Son. Paul also alluded to the light of the universe, Yahweh's Son, appearing soon. So we must drop, meaning to fling away, the works of darkness which tend to hinder our success in spiritual warfare. Colossians 1, 15 through 20 declares, Messiah is the visible image of the invisible Elohim. 
He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him Elohim created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we cannot see, such as principalities, powers, thrones, and dominions in the invisible realms. All things were created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. The cosmic rules and authorities are the powerful, dark, and evil forces found in the ranks of fallen angels and demons under Satan the devil's unholy rule. He is a dirty fighter and a vicious opponent. To withstand attacks from Satan's governing agencies, authorities, and the satanic hordes of their demonic offspring, we must depend on Yahweh's mighty power to make full use of his armor. Paul is not only giving this counsel to Messiah's worldwide congregations, but to each believer within Messiah's body of believers. Each member of Messiah's body needs to be ready for battle. As we wage war, wage battle against the mighty powers in this dark world, we must wage this battle in the full contingent of Messiah's congregational strength, whose power comes directly from the Holy Spirit. These rulers and authorities are the powerful dark and evil forces found in the ranks of fallen angels under the unholy rule of Satan the devil who is a dirty and vicious opponent. Hmm. Our great enemy is Satan the devil. His hordes of fallen angels, demons are which are disembodied spirits of the Nephilim and willing human hosts are our secondary enemies. They are bullies. Satan's roar is a weapon of distraction from his vast supernatural ar arsenal to keep the believers off balance and on their heels and with fear as they walk in obedience to Adonai Yeshua the Messiah. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 warns, Stay alert! Watch out for your great en enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking for someone to overwhelm. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Lions on, roar only after they have caught their prey and not before. They are stealthy and powerful creatures, quiet in the high grasses, and are called the kings of beasts in Proverbs for good reason. Satan cannot prey on true believers. He can only make unobservant believers think that he can prey on them by bullying them off with his roar a proclamation of war for their supposed impending defeat. Adonai, I'm sorry, Adonai Messiah Yeshua holds all things together by the mighty power of his command. He created all things and sustains them within himself. He alone is the victorious creator. Hebrews 1.3 says, The Son radiates Yahweh's own glory and expresses the very character of Elohim and it sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic Yahweh in heaven. Victorious living is the result of an intimate relationship with Adonai Yeshua the Messiah, the one true Elohim in human form. Our true victory comes through Messiah who loved us. Romans 8 reveals that we are overcomers only in Messiah. His great love and victory for us should cause us to respond with love for Yeshua and reflect him for those in our sphere of influence. <clears throat> Romans 8, 35 through 37 declares, Can anything ever separate us from Messiah's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Messiah who loved us. It is, a, it is this love that demonstrates that we are victors over an unloving, hateful, spiteful world 
held captive by the enemies of all humanity, Satan, his fallen angels, and their demonic offspring. I have recently come to realize that often when we see Yahweh's armor described as that of a Roman centurion, it is not an entirely an accurate description. Paul points this out, and points this fact out to us in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 3 reveals, We are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. Christians are responsible to live out this revelation with authority and victory. Each believer faces spiritual warfare on a daily basis. Sometimes it appears that we might be fighting a losing battle. Messiah's followers are constantly fighting against dark forces of evil. This verse describes spiritual hand-to-hand -hand combat against an overwhelming enemy. But with the right weapons, we can prevail. We just have to use them, folks. We are not waging a conventional earthly military campaign. Our battle is not being waged against flesh and blood humanity. It is against invisible armies attacking us from spiritual realms. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 exhorts, We are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. We use Yahweh's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to demolish the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing Elohim. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Messiah. This is to other believers. We also have to, not only do we face supernatural opponents from the uh, dark evil forces of the second heavens. We face spiritual battle from one another. Make no mistake, when Paul was telling us this, no unbeliever is going to obey Messiah. No unbeliever can be persuaded that uh, he, has a, he or she has a false argument. False arguments come from our nominal brothers and sisters who call themselves Christians but are not walking in obedience to Messiah. It's by our pleading, praying, and uh, intercessory prayer that we can cause them to learn to obey Messiah. Satan, the devil, rules this universe from the invisible dimensions of the second heavens which has taken strong opposition against Yahweh's heaven. Spiritual warfare takes place in the second heavens. Satan's weapons are not physical, but can manifest as physical weapons with the help of willing human pawns. The dark warriors of the second heavens use their evil warfare technologies to defeat us. These are not merely flesh and blood enemies, but are fallen angels over whom Satan the devil is in command of. They are not mere fantasies. They are, off, they are very real, dangerous, and powerful. We face a powerful opponent, or a powerful army from the second heavens, whose goal is to, to defeat Messiah's congregations. When we put our trust in Messiah alone for salvation, we inherit these dark forces as our enemies. Fallen angel and demonic hosts of the second heaven are blatantly waging war on Messiah's saints. Our defense has to be waged using heaven's arsenal for spiritual warfare to prevail here. 1 John 5, 4 declares, Every child of Yahweh defeats this world, and we achieve the victory, this victory only uh, through our faith. In reality, all our spirit, supernatural battles have actually been won. As Yeshua and his precious blood, uh, uh, ha, I'm sorry, as Yeshua shed his precious blood on Calvary, he literally reversed the curse of Adam and purchased redemption for all humanity. In all things, we are only victors through the immense power and blood of Messiah Yeshua and the positive confession of our testimonies of our most holy faith in him and in no one else. And that goes to the next point. Yahweh's armor of light must be worn every day. Believers need his armor to wage spiritual warfare in this dimension of space, time, and matter. 
As a matter of course, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, from the life of faith we exercise in Messiah Yeshua, we find ourselves in the thick of spiritual warfare against second heavens, rulers, and authorities. These rulers and authorities are the powerful, dark, and evil forces found in the ranks of fallen angels under the unholy rule of Satan the devil, who is a dirty and vicious opponent. Throughout scripture, we see that all believers are engaged in spiritual warfare, whether they know it or not. Peter warns all believers against underestimating our adversary, Satan the devil. Something worse than underestimating our enemy exists. It is not realizing that spiritual warfare is occurring. Satan has many believers stuck on stupid for refusing to believe spiritual warfare exists. Ephesians 1, 19 through 21 declares, This is the same mighty power that raised Messiah from the dead and seated him in the, right, in the place of honor at Elohim's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he, Messiah, is superior and master over every principality, power, throne, dominion, and everything else. Not only in this age, but also in the age, the new heaven and earth, to come. We have no reason to be distressed by Satan's warfare strategies, machinations, power, or stealth. We do not fight this battle alone. Yahweh has provided us the greatest power in the universe. Ephesians 6.10 tells us, Be strong in Adonai and in his mighty power. Paul encourages believers in this verse to be strong in Adonai and in his mighty power. It refers to the strength we are granted from Messiah, not the strength mere humans can muster or exercise. The Greek word, endunoao, is used for the phrase to be strong in Adonai or grow powerful in union with Adonai, referring to the genetic infusion of divine power from him. The command to be strong describes continual empowering of Messiah's congregations. Yahweh's strength and power are part of the kingdom blessings available to Yahweh's children in Messiah. This, the power that raised Messiah from the dead is the very same power that has been granted to all of Yahweh's children as we prepare for the spiritual warfare we must wage in this physical dimension. We need to clothe ourselves in Messiah's mighty power in order to defeat Satan. Yahweh has given us his power by placing his Holy Spirit within us. His heavenly armor is provided to protect us. To be strong in Adonai is continuous growth of divine power provided to us as we exercise walking or clothing ourselves in Elohim's mighty Holy Spirit. It is a matter of choice. Victory is in Him. We need to exercise Messiah's mighty power from the Holy Spirit to defeat Satan. Yahweh provided this power by placing His Holy Spirit within us and providing His protective armor to surround us. We must walk in the Holy Spirit's power to be prepared for spiritual warfare. We must learn to be clothed in, the Holy, in Holy Spirit power so that we can get outfitted with the armor Yahweh provides for us. 2 Corinthians 6-7 says, We faithfully preach the truth. Elohim's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left for defense. And what he's referring to is the sword is in the right hand, the shield is in the left hand. That's how we battle. Dominions, principalities, powers, thrones, and authorities are being directed by Satan for one evil purpose, and that is to enslave humanity under the tyrannical rule of his son, the false Messiah. As the whole universe has escalated toward chaos since the first Adam's fall, spiritual warfare has been waged on humanity. Satan, his fallen angels, and demons are our opponents. The Old Covenant writings exhort Yahweh's people to be strong in him, as when Yahweh anointed Joshua, when David sought Yahweh's strength, or Yahweh's promise to strengthen and restore Israel. 
A part of being strong, according to Paul, is that Yahweh's people need to put on and employ his specific army armor. This armor is also found in the Old Covenant writings, especially in Isaiah. Paul encourages believers in Ephesians 6.10 to be strong in Adonai and in his mighty power. He refers to the strength we are given from Yahweh, not strength we humans have to somehow exercise. To withstand attacks from powers and authorities which comprise Satan's hordes, we must depend on Adonai's mighty power and make use of every piece of armor which he supplies to us. Paul is not only giving this counsel to Messiah's congregations on the whole, but to each believer within Messiah's body of believers. Each member of Messiah's body needs to be armed for battle. We cannot even begin to enter into spiritual warfare until we have been prepared for battle. It is a militar militaristic discipline that finds its foundation in, the, in faith, in prayer, confession, and repentance. Zechariah 4.6 exhorts us, It is not by force of strength, but by my Holy Spirit, says Yahweh, of command, Yahweh the commander of heaven's armies. Zechariah points out that we cannot wage successful spiritual, supernatural battle with human strength or through human resolve. We will only be successful in battle through the Holy Spirit's power. We need Messiah's mighty power from his Holy Spirit to defeat Satan. Yahweh has provided this by placing his Holy Spirit within us and providing his protective armor to surround us. We must walk in the Holy Spirit's power to be, to be prepared for spiritual battle. To wage war in this physical dimension, we must outfit ourselves with the armor that armor Yahweh provides for us. The baptism in the Holy Spirit provides us completely with the full power of Yahweh our Elohim and gives us access to all of heaven's arsenal. This provides us, provides us success waging spiritual warfare. The full, going to the last point, the full armor of Yahweh is the armor of light which is intrinsic to spiritual warfare. We need to wage supernatural warfare through Yahweh's power. We must be at the ready to counter all demonic and fallen angelic forces. We must submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit's power and put on the full armor of Yahweh to battle against these forces effectively. Paul described that Messiah's divine passion has provided complete head-to-toe outfitting from Yahweh for believers in the, the days of spiritual battle against fallen forces from the second heavens. Ephesians 6.11 exhorts us to use all the armor and weaponry that Yahweh provides so that you will be able to stand against the deceptive tactics of the adversary, Satan the devil. The Greek word for armor is panoplia, which means to the full armor and complete outfitting to wear head-to-toe protection, defensively and offensively, created for hand-to-hand -hand combat. To stand against is a military term meaning to resist an enemy, hold a position, to offer no surrender nor retreat. Our only hope to hold our position depends on the use of Yahweh's armor. Satan does not fight fair. He is a dirty fighter who uses his dark arsenal of eternal weapons consisting of distraction, deception, and confusion in conjunction with his warfare strategies. We face a very formidable and, vis and invisible army of fallen angels and demons whose only agenda from Satan is to infiltrate our fellowships and to defeat Messiah's congregations from within. We are seeing that today, aren't we? The Panoplia the, or full armor, means to be fully equipped with head-to-toe protection defensively and offensively. This gear is created for hand-to-hand -hand combat in all supernatural uh, dimensions. We need, of, need all of Yahweh's heavenly armor in order to receive all the protection we need to stand firm against this, all strategies and tricks of our adversary, who is Satan the devil. He is our, and I'll add this here, primary opponent. 
when everything is said and done, we'll have no victory or success in spiritual battle without Yahweh the Father, Yahweh the Son, and Yahweh the Holy Spirit. They provide heaven's armor. We face a... Ephesians 6.12 reveals, For we are not struggling against human beings, but against the principalities, powers, and universal powers governing the, this darkness, against spiritual forces of evil that are found in the invisible heavenly realm of the second heaven. By virtue of our relationship with Messiah Yeshua, as we walk with him by faith, Satan's hordes have become our enemies. They use every dark weapon to turn us away from him and back to sin. Although believers are assured of victory, we must all engage in spiritual warfare until Messiah returns, because Satan's army is constantly waging war against all of Messiah's true followers. All supernatural warfare is waged in the invisible realms of the first through the third heavens, yet it influences our physical world. Satan, his fallen angels, and their demonic offspring are invisible. The principalities, power, thrones, dominions, and authorities hide in these unseen realms and dimensions. Satan has convinced fallen humanity that he doesn't really exist. This is his true power. These willing agent, our ruling agents and agencies use their formidable power to influence the world's thoughts and activities, especially those that reject Elohim's word and Messiah's divinity and sacrificial work. 1 Peter 5.9 exhorts, Stand firm against him, Satan, and be strong in your faith. As I have declared in the past, all spiritual warfare is waged in the dark realms of the second heavens, but the first and third heavens are involved in that as well. We wage war under certain rules of engagement. We are to be respectful and trust in Yahweh. 2 Peter 2.9-11 declares, Adonai knows how to rescue holy people from their trials, even while keeping the wicked under punishment until the day of final judgment. He is especially hard on those who follow their own twisted sexual desire and who despise authority. These people are proud and arrogant, daring even to scoff at supernatural beings without so much as trembling. But the angels, who are far greater in power and strength, do not dare bring from Adonai a charge of blasphemy against those supernatural beings. Messiah's followers are fighting against dark forces of evil. Ephesians 6.12 describes spiritual hand-to-hand -hand combat against an overwhelming enemy, but with the right weapons we can prevail. We are not waging a conventional earthly military campaign. Our battle is not being waged against flesh and blood, humanity, rather it is against invisible armies attacking us from spiritual realms. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 tells us, Satan, who is the ruler of this world, has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. Satan the devil rules this dimension from the realms of, the, realms of darkness in the second heaven, the kingdom ha that has taken strong opposition to Yahweh, and all spiritual warfare takes place in the second heaven. There is a host of spiritual forces arrayed against us, requiring us to use Yahweh's full armor. These are real and powerful beings, not mere fantasies nor inventions of science fiction of a science fiction writer's fancy. Satan's weapons are not physical, but can manifest as physical weapons with the help from willing human pawns. The dark warriors of the second heaven use its evil battle technology against us. These are not merely flesh and blood enemies, but also fallen angels over whom Satan the devil has full control. They are not mere fantasies. They are very real, very dangerous, and very powerful. We face a powerful enemy from the second heaven whose goal is to defeat Messiah's congregations. When we put our trust in alone in, for salvation, in Messiah alone for salvation, we inherit these dark forces of, uh, uh, as our enemies. Uh, it's repeated here for effect. Fallen angel and demonic hosts of the second heavens, heaven are blatantly waging war on, humanity, on Messiah's saints. 
Our defense has to be waged using heaven's arsenal for spiritual warfare to prevail here. Although believers are assured of victory, we must still engage in spiritual warfare until Messiah returns because Satan's army is constantly in, at battle against all who are, in, who are Messiah's followers. Satan's weapons of warfare have been the same since he tempted Eve. His weapons of warfare are distraction, deception, and confusion. They bring fear to those unprepared for battle. The powers of the second heaven have been revealing themselves to humanity for centuries to condition it for the last day's great deception and warfare that will follow the saints in gathering. Ephesians 6.13 exhorts us, put on every piece of Yahweh's armor, his armor of light, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Believers' response to the reality of this warfare should be to use every piece of Yahweh's armor. This heavenly armor is available to all believers, but each believer must have it and use it. We would, not, we would be neglectful not to be armored because all spiritual warfare is real. Satan's targets are placed squarely on our backs, and he is very good at sending his spiritual projectiles against us. Only by being clothed in Yahweh's armor will we be able to stand firm in faith. The statement, be standing firm, describes our stand against great and overwhelming opposition as, su as successful. Paul emphasized that it is only through Elohim's power to deliver us that we would be able to hold our positions, not give in to surrender or defeat. We must not give up any of Elohim's ter territories. Again, standing firm is a military term meaning to resist an enemy, hold the position, not to surrender or retreat. Our only hope to occupy and hold our positions depends upon using the weapons he provides. Ephesians 6, 14 through 18 can be translated to describe Yahweh's armor of light. We can compare it to a U.S. soldier's uniform in order to illustrate how believers should understand how to wear it. Yahweh's armor is not delicate, but very powerful and balanced. It is meant for hand-to-hand -hand assault against forces of darkness and for retrieving land that the enemy has taken in our lives. When worn out of proper discipline and diligence, our weapons of warfare are, and the unassailable armor Yahweh provides for us keeps us stable and able to make us make a stand in the midst of battle. F Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body of armor, or I mean, and the body armor of Yahweh's righteousness. Firstly, we must fasten the wide and sturdy belt of truth around our waists. This holds our armor stable from the middle up and the middle down. This belt for the armor was about six inches wide. A centurion's belt was the first piece of equipment he put on. It secured all the other pieces of his armor. Wearing the belt demonstrated the centurion was dressed and ready for imminent warfare. Believers should be surrounded by truth like a centurion's wide utility belt. Elohim's truth is the only answer to Satan's lies, murder, and deception. It is the only way we can wage spiritual warfare. The white belt of truth is the first element of Yahweh's armor of light. Roman centurions wore wide leather belts and to keep their armor in place to protect their vital organs such as their kidneys. The belt of truth, which is Elohim's word, that is in Yeshua, keeps our armor intact. Without his word to hold our armor together, we will fall before the enemy rather than prevail over Satan. Isaiah 11.5 declares, Justice will be the belt around his Yahweh's waist. Faithfulness will be the belt around his hips. The belt, this belt holds together the clothing underneath the armor, as well as holding the rest of the, its pieces of Yahweh's armor in place from neck to foot, including the breastplate and the sword sheath. The truth in Messiah protects us. Practically applied today, the belt of truth from Yahweh's armor is of light is 
used as a utility belt to carry weapons and protect us from exposure and vulnerability. Messiah Yeshua claimed that Satan is the father of lies. Distraction is one of Satan's oldest trick, tactics. We can see through Satan's lies by holding them against truth found in Elohim's word. Elohim's word defeats all lies of materialism, money, power, and pleasure as important necessities. The truth of Elohim's word shines his light into our lives and binds all of our supernatural defenses. The belt of truth that is found in Messiah Yeshua stabilizes our armor. Without the truth of his word to hold our armor together, we will fall before our enemies rather than prevail over them. The belt of truth holds our heaven's chainmail tunic, as well as the rest of the pieces of Yahweh's armor of light in place from neck to foot, including the breastplate and the sword sheath. When our enemy Satan, who is the father of lies, attacks us with his lies, half-truths, distractions, deceptions, confusion, and his distortion of Yahweh's word, we can stand firm in Messiah's truth. Paul used Psalm 59 to describe the armor of Yahweh. Isaiah describes Yahweh as wearing the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation along with the cloak of divine passion. Isaiah 59.17 tells us, Yahweh put on righteousness as his body armor and placed the helmet of salvation on his head. He clothed himself with a robe of vengeance and wrapped himself in a cloak of divine passion. We are provided Yahweh's full armor, which is stored in heaven for our head-to-toe outfitting. One of the most important parts of our armor is Yahweh's chainmail tunic, the cloak of divine passion. Paul described that Messiah's divine passion has provided complete head-to-toe outfitting from Yahweh to believers in the days of spiritual battle against the dark forces of the second heaven. Isaiah told us that the cloak of div Yahweh's divine passion is the foundation of his battle armor. Part of Yahweh's battle armor includes the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation. Even though it is not mentioned in Ephesians 6:10 through 18, one piece of Yahweh's armor of light is the cloak of Yahweh's divine passion, which protects each believer from his neck, his or her neck to their feet. Secondly, we put, must put on the body armor of Yahweh's righteousness. The body armor was a large leather, bronze, and, or chainmail piece that protected the body from the neck to the thighs. It is what protects our vital organs, such as our hearts, which in Greek thought was found in the midsection of our bodies, where we would feel the stress or blessings of emotional upheaval. Yahweh's righteousness provides us with powerful defenses. It is evidence that by faith we have been made right with Yahweh, and that his righteousness has been infused in us by his Holy Spirit. Ephesians 6.15 tells us to wear your, on your feet the readiness that comes from the good news of peace, the completeness of shalom, and the rest that comes from Elohim. Thirdly, all believers are called to carry the good news message of Messiah to the sinful world in our sphere of influence. It is the good news message that brings peace to those who receive it. Believers need the tactical boots of peace that comes from the good news. Today we would say that our tactical boots are forged out of the powerful good news message of Messiah Yeshua. Even though we are in the thick of battle, maybe even for our lives, Messiah gives us peace that overcomes the world, the flesh, and Satan the devil. We are given peace of mind and heart. This only happens when we share the good news message of Messiah's salvation and peace with those who have not heard it and put their trust in Messiah because of his good news message. We can stand firm with peace, Yahweh Shalom, even during hand-to-hand -hand combat because our testimony of the good news makes us overcomers in Messiah, not the overcome of the enemy. Ephesians 6.16 warns us, Always carry the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Fourthly, each soldier must carry the protection in the form of a shield. We believers, especially in the midst of spiritual battle, need the shield of faith to protect us from the enemy's projectiles. 
For believers, this shield is made up of faith, a complete trust in Yahweh, and a desire to do His will. Our Creator's armor was never meant merely to be put on as a show to, for others, but for spiritual battle. When Satan, our enemy, and the ruler of this world sends his fiery projectiles of temptation, doubt, anger, lust, despair, vengeance, and trials at us, we can raise our shields of faith to stop them and stop them. Ephesians 6.17 encourages us to put on, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is Elohim's word. Fifthly, without an armored helmet, we leave ourselves vulnerable to attack and defeat in battle. Messiah's helmet of salvation is our best and first protection against Satan's fiery arrows. With the assurance of salvation and Messiah protecting our minds and hearts, we can stand firmly against Satan when he or his fallen angels go on the attack and assault us spiritually and physically. In fact, without Messiah's salvation, we have about as much ability to conduct spiritual warfare as a water pistol is able to shoot down an American F-35 stealth aircraft. It just cannot happen. Sixthly, each believer must take up the sword of the Holy Spirit, Elohim's word. This, incidentally, is the only offensive weapon we make use of in the entire armor of Yahweh. Hebrews 4.12 tells us Yahweh's word is alive. It is at work and is sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts right through to where the soul meets the spirit and joints meet marrow. And it is quick to judge the inner reflections and attitudes of the, hearts, of the heart. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by Elohim's word. Elohim's word works as both a weapon of destruction and a scalpel of healing. It gets to the deepest corruption in our lives and removes it. The Holy Spirit uses Elohim's word as a two-edged sword, which is used as both an offensive and defensive weapon. And that is effective as we speak it out by faith and receive it through hearing it. Yahweh's mighty Holy Spirit gives his word its penetrating power and sharp edge. Yeshua's use of Yahweh's word during his temptation encourages our use of his word to defeat Satan. When our enemy Satan tries to tempt us with evil, we have the power to defeat him using Yahweh's word. He promised us that his Holy Spirit would remind us when it is needed. Ephesians 6.18 exhorts believers to pray in the Holy Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Lastly, the foundation of Yahweh's armor is prayer. Prayer stabilizes Yahweh's armor. Spiritual warfare without prayer is, as its solid footing is about as possible as bar barbecuing a snowball, a snowball on a grill. Prayer is the underlying foundation of Yahweh's armor of light. Without prayer, there would be no power to persist, and prevail during the days of spiritual warfare, defeat would be its result. In other words, prayer is our solid and sure footing. Amen? We must pray that our brothers and sisters in Messiah would be comforted and pray that Elohim would pour out a triple portion of faith on them and that they would be comforted according to their faith, whether they are slated to be dispatched to heaven, to be in Yahweh's big and loving arms, or to be released to their families to be taken care of uh, by their family, mobile army surgical hospitals, or when they are waiting for the destinies to be fulfilled on the front lines of their faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit gives us the assurance that he helps us when we pray. We do not know what to pray. The Holy Spirit prays on, uh, on our behalf. The Holy Spirit makes Yahweh accessible. A habitual prayer life is built and ordered around seeking Yahweh's desires for our lives from the application found in Elohim's written word, from which prayer is the foundation of his power. Extrapolating from Isaiah 59, the final piece of Yahweh's armor of light, his cloak of divine passion, completes the full armor of Yahweh which tell, Paul tells us about in Ephesians 6. Taking what was translated from Ephesians 6, 14 through 18 for the modern day soldier who wages spiritual warfare in the last days 
is very appropriate for our times and what we will have and what we all have been facing. Ephesians 6, 14 through 18 would say to those of us who practice spiritual warfare, take your stand and hold your position. Wear the utility belt that comes from that contains your tactical knife and ammunition cartridges for your sidearm. Wear your armored flak jacket of righteousness, which protects you from the neck to your waist. Put on the tactical boots which prepare you for the good news message of peace you bear. Above all, receive the air cover of faith, which protects you from the fiery projectiles and incoming ballistic missiles of your enemies. Put on the helmet of salvation, which is your primary source of protection and confidence in the work Messiah did on the cross of Calvary. Take up your fully automatic rifle loaded with the word of Elohim, which is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and maintain continuous communication with Command Central of Heaven to provide support in every area of your life, under every circumstance, and for every reason. Pray for all of your brothers and sisters worldwide who are on the front lines with all patience and petition for their very lives. Pray that Elohim would pour out a triple portion of faith on them and that they would be comforted according to their faith. Whether they, I kind of, I kind of duplicated some stuff here, so I'm just going to go on. The most powerful revivals of all times were successful, only because of prayer warriors seeking the Father's face for their families, loved ones, communities, and countries. Yahweh's armor was designed for us to face the enemy and not turn our backs on him. It has no protection for the back. There is no surrender and no retreat for believers in spiritual warfare. Paul encouraged believers to be strong with the Master's mighty power, referring to the strength we are granted from Elohim's Holy Spirit, not strength that we exercise from human discipline. The armor of light from Romans 13 is the same as Yahweh's full armor in Ephesians 6. It is Yahweh's chainmail cloak of divine passion which, which protects us from our neck to our feet. There is a host of spiritual forces arrayed against us, requiring to, yes to use Yahweh's full armor. These are very re real and powerful in human are powerful beings, not mere fantasies nor inventions of a science fiction writer's fancy. The primary forces arrayed against us from the invisible realms are the principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, and authorities, which attack us. They work very hard to defeat us. When worn with proper discipline and diligence, the weapons of our warfare and the impenetrable armor Yahweh provides for us keep us stable and able to make us stand in the midst of battle. Satan's weapons have been the same since he tempted Eve. His primary weapons of warfare are distraction, deception, and confusion. They can bring fear to those unprepared for battle. When everything is said and done, we will have no victory or success in spiritual warfare without Yahweh the Father, Yahweh the Son, and Yahweh the Holy Spirit, who will provide a heaven's armor. In benediction, 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by Elohim. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Yahweh has blessed you and will protect you. Yahweh has smiled on you and has been gracious to you. Yahweh has shown you his favor and will give you his shalom, complete, perfect and complete peace. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen.